Okay, shooting straight from the hip. Once again, lesson number six, man's higher consciousness by the legend, Hilton Hutima. If you missed out on the previous lessons, uh, I have a playlist called Man's Higher Consciousness. Uh, and you can go and listen to me, narrate it, and make commentary on it. So lesson number six, all the cold shower lovers are going to love this. Man's natural home. Man's natural home. Let's read. It stuns a man to tell him eating is not natural. Most men never heard of people who live without eating. We show in our work, the nutritional myth, that eating is an acquired habit. Like smoking, the sensation of hunger rises from certain stimulation of the elementary tract. Appetite comes with eating. An advanced scholar writes that there was not an ascent of man, but a descent of man. And this theory is supported by ancient records and legends, again, such as the Hindus in their uh, yuga cycles. And they say that uh, we're in the Kali Yuga now, the, the age of basically the, the age of least virtue. So it's, it, there is, it's time is cyclical and it, you ascend and then descend. Ascend and, so we, we've been on a descent. Man did not spring from the slime of the sea, nor from a worm in the ground, as science claims. He came from another planet or star, traveling to this planet in a spaceship now called Flying Saucers, several of which have been seen since 1947 and have, and some have landed on Earth and dead men have been found in them. <laughs> I guess Hutima was in contact with the ETs too. He uh, was uh, a wanderer, I guess he is a wanderer, clearly, clearly. This man did not eat, but subsisted on cosmic elements, like the angels. Angels are subs sustained off uh, light. So obvious. I don't even, I don't even want to read this anymore. It's like, it's like, duh. So obvious. Okay. He was a breatharian and assimilated sunshine and cosmic rays from the atmosphere of the earth to which he had come acclimatized himself to its atmosphere and his new environment. In that distant age, man dwelt in high places where air is purest and highly charged with ozone and cosmic rays. This cosmic substance he inhaled and it was termed the breath of life. By it, by it his body was animated and sustained. In the high altitude, the weather was perpetually cool. Cool. But his powerful vitality kept him comfortable. In that day, according to legend, man had a lifespan of nearly 100,000 years. He did not know somatic death, according to Bagot Arend, who said, During that time, it was common to find men and women who were thousands of years old. In fact, they did not know somatic death. They passed from one accomplishment to a higher attainment of life and its reality. They accepted life's true source and it released them its boundless treasure in a never-ending steam of abundance. Long age passed and the time came when man decided to use pure rainwater, so he added liquids to his sustaining substance. This man was blonde in complexion, had sparkling blue eyes that resembled the color of the sky, and hair of golden yellow that resembled the sunshine. The ancient Greeks had a tradition of the Hyperboreans, who dwelt in the mountains in a land of perpetual sunshine and ate only fruit. But originally, like the gods from whom they descended, subsisted on air and sunshine. They were never ill, and the duration of their life was a thousand years. The word hyper hyperborean means beyond or in the mountains. Man's traditional fall occurred, so fall, okay, occurred when he migrated to lower levels where he found fruit growing and ate thereof, an event symbolized by eating the apple. Only after man descended to the low regions of the tropics, where he found fruit growing in abundance, did he become a consumer of food and darker in color. Boy, that puts a hole, a big giant hole in the story that uh, human beings are tropical. I mean, you've probably heard me say this over and over. <laughs> human beings are tropical. I'm living in the tropics. I moved to the tropics. And even my off-grid project is uh, going to be in the tropics. 
uh, and uh, it's actually making me rethink the location and make me rethink the whole thing. I mean, I you know, it's uh, let me finish the chapter. It's almost over. Then we'll have a discussion. Altitude is beneficial. Science shows that climate and altitude govern man. Each race harmonizes with its environment. In the high, cool regions, in the warmer, middle regions, in the low, hot regions, the type of people differ. But in each region, they are basically similar. According to climate, attitude, altitude, and the condition of the air, so is man. By these, he is ruled. His constitution formed and his habits shaped. Regardless of where or how man lives, his body is basically composed of and sustained by cosmic rays, either directly or indirectly. So everybody's a breatharian, essentially. In the form of minerals condensed from the rays after they strike the Earth's atmosphere. So stop giving credit to fruits and coconut water and all that things for giving you minerals and blah, blah, blah. Because that's you're, you're getting it from cosmic rays. When you sleep, you wake up, you feel better. Why? Because you're getting your mineral balance is getting replenished by cosmic rays okay everything else is just whatever it's not it's not doing anything it's all it's all the force give credit to the force don't give credit to its children coconut water is just a child of the force it's just a, it's such a limited finite thing the co cosmic rays the force gives you everything you are the force you are the force The air of such regions, so she's talking about the tropics, lacks freshness and vigor. It contains too much carbon dioxide and too little oxygen in ozone. Also, the humid decomposing humus in the soil emits odors of acid decay that further weakens the body and shortens its duration. I have to agree. I'm in the tropics right now. I have to agree. The air quality is uh, not comparable to say Canada actually Canada has really good air <laughs> it's like I mean superb that's the only thing I miss up that's about the only thing I miss about Canada the air quality is superb there it's cold higher altitude yeah actually ever since I came to the tropics I I haven't had a moment where I was like wow this air is fantastic. But I had a lot of those in Canada. The worst air, speaking generally, is the stagnant, stifling, warm air in low regions of the temperate and tropic zones. In the latter region occurs the lowest human degeneration, and in some of these regions, the average lifespan is surprisingly short. Languor, listlessness, weakness, and poor health come when the body cells are saturated with acids that disturb the mineral balance they lack the capacity to receive and register cosmic radiations properly when the mineral deficiency advances far enough the organic radio fails to function on the life level and that state is termed physical death so that's the chapter it's short but oh, wow it's making me question everything i lived in uh Calgary, Alberta for four years, high city, very good air, but in the winters it's, it lacks, it's dry, so it's, um, it's not the most optimal in that sense, but I wonder if, I wonder if the dryness is only perceived dryness because the body is so toxic that it, it can't even pull atmosphere, uh, water out of the atmosphere properly, anyway. And now when I go to the Rocky Mountains, go take a drive in an hour, it's like, whoa, you get there and, oh my God, just a sniff of that air gets you high like a kite, man. It gets you high like a kite, <laughs> like a kite. Something that is not here in the tropics, you don't, you don't get that. You absolutely don't get that. You don't get high off the air. But in mountains, you do. In high altitude, you do. And it's really making me question. Because I think uh, in later chapters, uh, Hotima talks more about this. But let's talk about it now. He says that uh, it's because due, due to our poor circulation, and he mentions this in, in this chapter, that the reason why we can't handle the cold is that because we have a poor blood circulation. And we can't handle it because we have low vitality. 
And it is perhaps why somebody like Wim Hof, the Iceman Wim Hof, whose entire philosophy is about breathing and about nature and about cold and about mountains, is probably why he can uh, sustain himself, per be perfectly calm, perfectly warm, perfectly serene, perfectly in, in, in peace. Not, not even his hands aren't even red because he's so warm, he's so vital. He, he, the blood circulation throughout him, he's a breatharian. I mean, he, he eats once a day, he eats very little. He talks about like, in, uh, I saw in one of his talks about how 90% of our energy is not food, but it's uh, actually the breath. Um, and I presume that Wim Hof can, I mean, I don't know to what extent Wim Hof is aware of the I, I, of breatharianism, but I'm sure if he catches on the knowledge, I'm sure he would uh, he would pursue it and, and become a breatharian very easily. Uh, and so, anyway, I think Wim Hof still eats for pleasure, but I also don't think the idea of breatharianism registered in his head quite yet. Uh, maybe he hasn't caught on the information yet yet. But anyway, I think probably that's why he could uh, withstand uh, these ice cold temperatures and be so vital. I mean, I took, I was in Canada, I lived in Canada, I took cold showers for four years. Man, unbelievable. So it's making me question that perhaps uh, tropics are in our home, but they became our home once we degenerated, once we fell. I mean, it's a falling again, you fell in latitude. As above, so below. It can, it's kind of making sense here, isn't it? Fall in consciousness, fall from the high altitude. You talk, you know, you hear of all these gods, Zeus in them. It's always mountains, or the legendary yogis of the Himalayas. It's always some mountains, isn't it? Perhaps there's something in the air in those mountains. And it's also making me question the uh, location. I mean, uh, I'm working on the off-grid project. Some of you guys are aware. It's making me question. Uh, originally, I have the idea, I mean, it's it's going to be in Ecuador. But Ecuador has such a wide uh, variety of of climates. And it's making me just question, like, hey, why don't you get your body straight, get your blood circulation straight, go live in the cold again. You lived in 15 years. Do some cold training. You go to Ecuador, you could go live in the Andes. And I, uh, become a breatharian and uh, rec realize go back to your original home, not the tropics, which are actually the mountains, and perhaps even do the, the community in a, in a place of high altitude. I'm, you know, I'm reconsidering all this because it's like, I'm connecting the dots. I mean, I was big on cold training. I took cold charge for, for, for four years and they gave me insane vitality. I know I have yet to breathe better air than uh, the air I breathed in Canada, you know, uh, especially the Rocky Mountains. I really have yet to, I mean, it's high, you get high. Go to any mountain range. I mean, the Rockies is the one I went to uh, over and over. And I swear, when I'm there, just once, I like, I get high. You don't understand. I'm like, I'm talking high. I'm talking high, like, oh, oh, you know. And uh, yeah, there. It seems. I mean, I think of the Iceman Wim Hof. He's got such high vitality, so his body, his circulation is so good. He can handle. I mean, he's a semi-breatharian Wim Hof. And uh, and he's so vital, and his blood circulation everywhere, and then so he, his vitality can easily handle the cold. That perhaps the only reason we get cold is because we uh, we have poor blood circulation due to our drug habit of eating. So I'm, um, uh, I mean, what happens in a cold shower? <laughs> You uh, oxygenate and you get the blood circulation running through the body and then uh, you're warm and you can handle the cold. That's, that's there. The evidence is mounting, folks. The evidence is mounting. I think Hutima here is onto something. And is making me reconsider the whole, uh, the location of the, of the off-grid project. So, uh, but that's, you know, it's a project unfolding. It'll take many years. So the location won't. That's not for later to pick the location, but you know it's making me it's making me question things. It's also making me connect the dots here. Perhaps our home is not the tropics, but it became our home when we degenerated, when we fell from the high altitudes, fell in consciousness, fell into the tropics, ate from the apple, ate from the trees, and then yeah, and then 
and then the rest uh, followed. Man, this uh, this is very very interesting stuff. This is fascinating, fascinating, and you know I just gotta give a shout out. God bless Hotima, wherever you are, your soul. Thank you for this. Thank you. I appreciate this. I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.